men write in their profile things like, oh, I love a woman who can debate. Like, I love a woman with opinions, have something to say. That's a red flag. I'm not going to fault somebody for being a victim of this capitalist system. And if their heart and values align with mine, bring it all over, baby. We'll start something. I'm suspicious of the idea that your work should be the the place where all of your ambition goes. And so I kind of want to be open yeah. to the people who maybe they're working at a restaurant or whatever. And that work is fine to them because it fits into like the other parts of their life they like. Do you have Valentine's plans? I I do not, Jackson Hinkle. I do you not have Valentine's plans. Come out to LA plans. with me. We'll have, <laughs> come out to LA. We'll have a great. I know I'm not from a marginalized community, but <laughs> we can have a great. I know, and I'm only 22. Jackson but we can Hinkle have a great is gonna time. shoot a shot. Jackson, you are 22 years old. You were born in like 1997 or something. <laughs> I am hyped today to do a follow-up episode on one of my all-time favorites, our dating on the left panel. Last time, we happened to have a roster of women discussing what it's like to date as a leftist on the left, the specific perils that one encounters when your politics are a significant significant part of what the heart desires. I am joined by an all-star panel today. Uh, we have James Fauntleroy, host of the JB Font Show and co-host of Revolutionary Blackout Network. Welcome, James. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> We have Jackson Hinkle, host of The Dive. Welcome. Happy to be here. And Bertram Cooper returning to the show, who is a writer and author of one of the more viral pieces of literature to go around the internet. Welcome back to the show, Bertrand. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. All right. I need to first just, you know, get a sense of where we are. Whom among us has attempted to date in the COVID times? I have. I've, I've made that attempt. Okay, just one. James Jackson, are you booed up or are you just like not looking? Jackson, you go first. <laughs> go um, ahead, Jackson. Go ahead. I got out of a long relationship like at the start of COVID. Okay. And since then, I've just been having fun. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm currently not booed up. What does having fun mean, Jackson? Having fun in Los Angeles means different adventures every night. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, I should also ask you guys, if it's not too um, uh, forward, how how old are you? I'm 22. Okay, uh, James, how old are you? 37. Okay, and Bertrand? 33. And I should add. Go ahead. Boot up, just in case my girlfriend okay. watches this boot up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we have a representative. I think it's interesting and telling that there were there were no booze on the off-female panel, but that's a conversation we'll circle back to. Now, I James. I am boot up, though. Okay. James is boot up as well. All right. I'm good. I'm, I'm glad we, we added Jackson then because then we have a little bit of diversity. So, James, you did date or did you not, not meet your boo during the COVID cycle? It, I, I met him before the COVID cycle. Okay. Were you guys, you know, like in a couple before COVID or did it like cement itself at all during the COVID? Like, like were you still dating during COVID? We we were a couple before COVID. Uh, it's kind of interesting because I'm, okay, this is going to be kind of weird for people to hear, but I'm also in a non-monogamous relationship, traditionally non-monogamous. Excellent. Uh, I, there are, the, it is, the, the concept of it is actually growing. You see people like, uh, um, Willow Smith, she actually came out as polyamorous that, mm -hmm. you know, not saying that I particularly am polyamorous, but I am surrounded by a lot of polyamorous people. And so they are, you know, now non-monogamy is becoming more of a trend, not necessarily a trend, but people are more open to it because they're realizing that not everyone has to fall into a default relationship style within a relationship sphere. So some people are, you know, um, you know, in different types of relationships now. So, yeah. So, so when I said that I, I didn't, I wanted to go straight to Jackson first, it was Got that it. I am boot up, but, but you I also, also date. I also date. Yeah. Okay. So I want to ask, Oh, Birch and I have to ask you too, you know, did you meet your partner during COVID or before? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm an interesting person for this because I was uh, I was in a relationship. I was high school sweethearts until last year. So I was with my ex for 
uh, 15 years, oh, got wow. divorced or began the divorce process last April, then tried to uh, date. That was interesting, coincidental. Everyone in LA is like Polly. So I experimented with like one of those dating sites for like a second, but I just, I, pre I hated writing a bio. I prefer meeting people in real life. <laughs> Wait, just, so what's the issue with, uh, is it a poly specific dating site or are you just generally speaking found the dating sites to be off putting? So this was specifically for people who were poly um, or at least felt that they were in that spectrum. There's, I was learning a lot of acronyms as I went. Uh, <laughs> there was so much there, but uh, yeah, it was specifically for that or people who were interested in some ethical non-monogamy situation there were a whole bunch of varieties but i just i was always comfortable like just walking up and talking to people so bars and clubs and things like that were faster than me or faster than that for me so i met someone um yeah just in, in real life wait, wait, wait. Yeah, so in covid times you met someone going to a bar or a club and walking up to them and talking and to I, them and I, I should also define here because I might be out of the. Are we still in COVID times? There's COVID time. What What's the parameters of COVID time? I'm assuming we're still in it. I mean, we have to have vaccine passports okay. here in yeah. DC. Like it's COVID times. It's yeah. I I respect other people's choices, but I'm not lingering and malingering in public spaces like that. I I'm generally speaking not eating at restaurants unless it's an outside situation. You know, COVID times. Okay. Yeah. I met someone in COVID times last, uh, last July. Um, I was at a strip club. My girlfriend is a stripper and just end up meeting her there. Obviously she was at work, mm -hmm. um, and have just been with her since August. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask this. How much do your personal politics influence your choices. I'll start with you, Jackson, because I suspect that if you're just having fun, it's less of an issue. It's uh, for me, it's interesting because if I have a YouTube show and girls always want to know like what type of a YouTube show I do. And then I start saying, you know, it's about politics and they start asking me about my politics. Mm -hmm. So I find myself being uh, the my political views do play a role, but I usually fare well with like conservative girls better than more. liberals yeah <laughs> i don't know why i think it's probably just because like on social issues that's what most people care most about i'm just not that passionate so i probably align more with like conservative people on those sorts of things but um yeah i don't know there's not a lot of people who are like super like uh passionate in politics in los angeles i've found mm -hmm just kind of like surface level stuff. So I guess not a huge role, but uh, if it ever does, it's usually liberals that don't like me. I mean, that's certainly relatable. I see you laughing, Birch. And have you also experienced having a hard time with dating liberals in particular? I haven't had a hard time with that. I, I just, I find it funny because I know where he's coming from. Like I know probably why he has those difficulties. I always end up, I find other people who are liberal or left, but because um, I I end up in these amalgam networks, like I, I tend to gravitate towards people who have similar backgrounds to me where they're like lower working class or lower, uh, like poor. So they might be liberal, but they're surrounded by people who have like these very hodgepodge views where I'm around, like I meet a lot of like waitresses who I would assume would be leaning left, but in fact, because all they really interact with is they don't like the taxes, they actually go conservative or people who are like kind of the first liberals in their families mm. where like their parents were very uh, much more like Republican or conservative working class people. And then they, for some reason, are not. So I'm always in these situations where like the friend group is this weird mix. So Jackson says that politics come up frequently because his job is politics. In your interactions, Bertrand, how soon does that become an issue? How soon specifically did it become an issue with your current partner? It comes up pretty quick for me. Because um, the moment people ask me, like, what I do, I say, like, I have my day job in tech and that I do, you know, I'm 
writing on the side and then they ask if I've you know been published or how that's going and I mentioned current affairs and New York Times and different places and immediately they want to know what I'm writing about mm -hmm. um, so it's it's pretty fast the moment that conversation comes about what do you do is probably gonna be a segue into my politics and my feelings towards class so it comes up very quickly for me and when you're searching on those apps I know you said you didn't use them very much but was your ability to search and this any of you can you know answer this is your ability to search your or your rather your inability to search by like leftist an issue because usually it's it's like conservative moderate liberal those are the options i can't speak for anyone else but because i'm like a contrarian in my liberal leftist circle those words don't help me very much yeah yeah yeah, I usually just uh, I I don't even put my political label on my dating profile. I just leave it blank. Interesting. Yeah. That could go either way, Jackson. <laughs> that could be like that could be a red flag. But I mean, maybe it doesn't matter keep, to you. But I keep my uh, well, that's just the thing, though. I feel like when you put on when you're when you're confined to like liberal or conservative or like modern, I think is the other one that Hinge uses. Mm -hmm. It's like I feel like that's very. Uh, People people might form opinions about you that you might not actually have. So that's just kind of why I leave it blank. Yeah, I put I put liberal because like what else? <laughs> but I also am like wearing a Bernie shirt in one of my pictures. OK, how I try to save yourself balance it out. Yeah, I'm outing too much about myself. What about you, James? Did you have you ever used any of the apps or how did you meet your partner? Oh, honey, <laughs> I'm gay. I, apps is my life. Come on. <laughs> like, what? Okay, Sorry, so I didn't mean to call you honey, but it was just, I didn't no, mean it in that way. <laughs> let's I meant honey. I meant honey in this way, not honey in the straight way. You know what I mean? That's what I meant. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. so, so tell me about it. Like, how much, you know, I have heard about the app, these gay apps that are not necessarily as not that any of them are super substantive, but like <laughs> they tend to be kind of image driven. And, you know, how much do politics even come up on a, in a context like that? Politics? What about politics? Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so uh, they can they can definitely come up. I got lucky mm -hmm. um, with my boyfriend because we met and uh, he, he's more of a gamer, mm -hmm. but when I started hearing as we were dating about his politics, I was in the process of moving towards the left. Mm -hmm. So of course, you know, it, it started with me supporting Bernie and I was, you know, talking about, you know, different things like uh, Medicare for all and the green mm -hmm. deal. And he was right there with me. He was like, yeah, definitely. And as, as I moved left, I started to see more how far left he was. And so it got to a point where I was like, well, yeah, housing is a human right. And pe food is a human right. Shelter is a human right. I said, I started saying all these different things. And he's like, uh, yeah, please, definitely. And so I kind of got lucky. Um, but at the same time, when talking to other guys, here's the deal. And I think I'm the only queer person on the panel. So queer representation. <laughs> A lot of queer people typically default in the liberal circles. Mm. So I don't really ever have a chance to date or talk to anybody that is queer and conservative. So that just like that's like a unicorn for me. So I, I never see a log cabin Republican coming my way. So uh, for me, it's it's like there are Kamala stands or Biden stands or they just like what Bernie has to say. And, you know, uh, typically um, I don't really get too much into it now because, well, I'm already booed up. So why am I going to, you know, talk to people who have, you know, uh, varying difference of political uh, leanings? So so I'm glad you raised Kamala stance because I, you know, we all are in our bubbles. It is what it is. I don't frequently encounter people who are conservative per se. But when I thought of doing the first episode about what it's like to date on the left, my query, my, my real interest was in figuring out how people negotiated liberals, because I agree with Jackson. Most of my conflict in my personal life, online, professionally, et cetera, is like liberals like Bradley Whitford yelling at me on Twitter, not some random conservative that either we never engage each other or we like actually agree, you know, Biden bad. 
<laughs> so I, I'm curious. When I put that question to the lady panel and asked them, would they date a Kamala stan? People lost their minds and like strongly objected Why? to the idea. Oh, I can't tell her it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And I feel like you guys are just like not that pressed. Uh, would I date a Kamala stan? Yeah, that, that's the question. Yeah, that's the question. Uh, I think the question probably is like, what would a Kamala stand date any of us? You know, like, I don't know. Well, I, I was seeing a girl for a little bit and like a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and she was like a Kamala. I think she I don't want to give too much away, but she was a Kamala stand mm -hmm. and uh, she's very, very political. And um but she got over me just because like I she would say some some I don't know if we can some dumb stuff and I would and I would just be so frustrated by it. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? So I think I think I'm open to date anyone or go out with anyone. But uh, I, I don't know. I think maybe it's a it's an issue they have with us. Well, can you give an example of the kind of thing that she would say that would cause you to respond somewhat critically? <laughs> well, yeah. So she she does she does political work. And uh -huh. she does debates and stuff like that. And we were out one night and mm -hmm. some, something came up about me being in politics. And I said I was a communist. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone said, well, what do you think about like China and the genocide going on in China? Mm -hmm. I said, there is no genocide going on in China. And she lost it on me. So that's that's an example of <laughs> one thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they do lose it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. We're getting a little okay. too base for this show. <laughs> no, no, we're we're good. James, have you ever had a moment like that with your partner? No, you guys have been growing perfectly left at the same time, at the same pace throughout all of this. Damn, you know what? I honestly think that he was probably further left than I was at, uh -huh. when we first met. That's probably how I think it was. Um, but... As far as dating a Kamala Stan, that's an interesting question. I wouldn't date any Stan, period. The reason being is because I stand policy and not people. And if you're the type of person that stands a politician, I'm going to be like, well, what is it about? Like, what policies are most attractive to you? Because that tells me about your inner person. Do you believe okay. that how... You know, well, I, well, I, well, a Kamala stand is, you know, that standum is based in loving a strong woman in chucks and pearls who knows how to wear a blazer and mm -hmm. represent in the White House. So we all know what that is. But let's let's take the word stand out of it. If that if that is, you know, derailing a little bit, would you date well, someone who, you know, voted for Kamala, you know, a hypothetical person who couldn't vote, vote for Kamala Harris in the primary? I mean, nobody's perfect. So, <laughs> you know, it just depends on where the, it, it, it look. There's some people who voted for Biden and they regretted the decision. So, I mean, look, if if I like if my boyfriend said I voted for Biden, but I regret it, I'd be like, OK, yeah, but babe, that's, that's okay. the general election. In the general election, a lot of people with very diverse politics chose to vote for Joe Biden for harm reduction True. reasons. That's a very True. different thing than saying I look at this field of 26 candidates and Pete Buttigieg is my guy. You know, Kamala Harris is my my lady. I, I'm a Bloomberg stan. You know, like that's a very that's a very different kind of choice. But but then that goes into uh, the values that that person holds, because a lot of times then they'll say, well, I believe that health care is a human right. But then they'll, you know, talk about, you know, uh, they'll talk against Palestinians mm -hmm. and uphold Israel, even though Israel is doing apartheid against Palestinians. It's mm -hmm. like, where do your values really lie? So that that's kind of where I'm going. It's like, it's like, I I get that you may have thought at that time that that person was the you know this pinnacle, but when it comes down to it, outside of the purview of that person, who are you and what do you really value? And a lot of times. It may be either one because of ignorance, because they don't really know, like they, they get um, they get kind of brainwashed by the chucks and the pearls and thinking that person is a strong black, you know, a strong black woman. But at the same time, it's like, well, was she that strong? Because, I mean, look, Steve Mnuchin gave to her campaign and she was supposed to 
uh, go against, you know, she was supposed to prosecute him, but she never mm-hmm. did. And it's like, mm-hmm. was that really strong? You know, so it. it Have you had one of those conversations before? Have you actually had to go through that with a romantic partner? No, because <laughs> I mean, then again, uh, I didn't really get to date as much because I didn't come out until I was like 33. And so oh, interesting. And I, we've got yeah. we've got a, an, a Pete. <laughs> we've got a Mayor Pete in our hands. <laughs> no, 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 the no. only thing you have in common. <laughs> no, 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 not Mayor Pete. Mm-mm, no, not Peter Paul <laughs> Montgomery. No, Bree. No. All right. All right. No, <laughs> no, I do not mean to offend James. <laughs> just like an, uh, uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> no, it's all cool. It, it, it's funny. But I, I just I, I just learned that right now. So I'm just like, what? What in the world? Oh, that Pete came out late in life? Yeah. Later in life, relatively? Yeah. I had no idea. But hey, OK, that's cool. But I came out, you know, at 33 and then literally like six months later, I met my boyfriend. That's also very much what happened to Pete Buttigieg, but I won't belabor that comparison. <laughs> Free Chaston. Bertrand, I need to ask you here. I, you know, this we've been talking about this question of like, you know, would you date or would they date you, someone who is, you know, kind of a hardcore liberal? How much did, was this an issue that came up when you first met and started dating your partner? It wasn't an issue because the person I met, uh, what's even the word? She, I don't think I'm drawn to people whose political opinions are like as intensely defined as mine, possibly because I don't know that I'd permanently want to be in these conversations all the time. So I tend to look for people who seem like they have, I'll say like the values, the virtues behind liberalism, like uh, really simple stuff. Like in LA, you're constantly passing homeless people. Mm. And I want to hear what sort, what do they say when someone asks us for change or when we pass like an enclave of homeless people, are they going to say something unkind? Like, uh, looking at them why are they here or are they going to say like that's really sad we should do something about housing or something like that so i'm looking generally for them to be kind and have these sort of values that inspire my political beliefs but i don't know that i could really handle somebody who is standing for anyone i like what james said about the policy i think i could get with that um but guys come on that's a that's a little bit of of a cop out like ignore the word stan because if that's derailing the conversation you know you know what i mean the reality is these things come in in pair in 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 groups right like if someone you can sit and say like most people most liberals i I would say aren't like blatantly saying like let's kick the homeless and oh Mm -hmm. you know pu i want them off my sidewalk but they will very much say, oh, I don't want this, you know, um, homeless shelter to be built in my neighborhood. Uh, I don't want my school district to integrate with the one next door because it's yeah. going to hurt uh, my kids' educational attainment. All of these kinds of NIMBY type things. And yeah, then they will so- go and support, you know, candidates that don't actually support the kinds of policies that would, I don't know, end homelessness like Bernie Sanders had a plan to do, even though they're yeah. like nice people. I would say that you know talking to my girlfriend and everything i was checking to see like where these facts especially because all of my work's focused on my concern for the poor so i was interested in all those opinions Mm -hmm. um i guess it feels like it's simple in my memory because she checked out so quickly like it's just like okay you there's no like hard clashes here where um the nimby stuff that would have gotten to me really badly if it was something like expressing all these general anodyne opinions of the support for the poor, but like you, your dream is to like live in a suburb that there's like no poor people near. So if she had had any of those, um, that, that would have been an argument that might've been too much for me to be around. It just didn't come up since my dating experience is not extensive. I don't have like a lot of stories of like, what would I do if I was actually in that conversation? I got to hear someone slip and be like, yeah, I just don't want to be close to where the homeless are. I just want to be far from the city. I've never actually gotten to be on the other side of someone like expressing one of those, that that paradox between like wanting to support, but just wanting to make sure that they're far away from okay, like actually I, having to I don't work. know what's going on here. And this came up in the women's one as well. I, there was a big men are trash vibes in the, in the women's one, and, except for Kate who's bi, who also offered that women are trash as well. Fair enough. 
I wouldn't know personally. However, like the vibes that I'm getting here <laughs> are like women actually are fabulous because and our gay men are also fabulous. Also not an option for me. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because like or, or and or that you guys just like are not as as invested or or something where the conflicts aren't emerging to the extent they were with women. Cause I I I struggle mightily, mightily to meet people who with whom there isn't a great deal of conflict, no matter how much I sublimate my own beliefs in an effort to just get along. I was seeing someone at one point who was a he liked Bernie, but worked for Biden. And agreed with me broadly, but there were some pushback sometimes on the occasional issue, one of which was uh, student debt cancellation, which everyone knows is my hobby horse. And it wasn't like, you know, dispositive. It's not why things ended at all. But there were all of these little minefields that would pop up here and there. And we were like broadly politically aligned. We voted for the same person in the primary. And it's just really interesting to me that it just doesn't seem to be front of mind for any of you. I think that uh, in the question of like Kamala supporters in general, like I see more of an issue, not with the policies, because I feel like I can find points of agreement with just about anybody, like even Trump supporters on like some issues. So I think my problem with like Kamala supporters, and maybe this was even more of a problem for the uh, panel of women because they saw this even more in like guy Kamala supporters, but Kamala supporters just seem like mentally weak. (laughs) You ever notice that? Like they seem like very mentally weak. And I don't know, like, I think if you're, if you're a woman, like, and maybe not all women, but like, if you're looking for something like more traditional, you kind of want like a a man who's not mentally weak. You want a strong person by your side. Mean, and Kamala supporters are just weak. What What does that mean? And I mean, like, I don't, I guess I'm speaking kind of anecdotally, an- anecdotally, but like speaking out of the Kamala supporters that I grew up with and I know, like not only are they mentally weak, they're like scrawny, like, like Jackson. gross human beings. So I mean? think- I'm a little how bit mean, we, but no, no, not mean. I'm not saying that you're mean. I'm just trying to ask, like, how you could possibly like don't make me defend Kamala supporters right now. But let's let's put let's put what they look like to the side. What do you mean that they are mentally mentally weak? Well, like they just uh, they have no true ability to, like, hold accountable the politicians that, you know, they say they support. Right. That's like an easy way of looking at it. They say they support like certain values And then Kamala Harris goes and votes against those values. And because of whatever sort of like personal attachment they have to Kamala Harris being like the first potentially like a black woman president, they continue supporting her probably for those like culture based reasons or like identitarian reasons, you know? So I think like those kind of signify like, oh, like a weak mentality. I don't know. I could be wrong. That's how I see them. There's a lack of like political integrity built yeah. in because she so yeah. was never about policies first. Yeah. And I see that as like a, a weak characteristic. So I will say that my, in my experience, I haven't, I haven't met so many people who, you know, their identity was formed around like in Kamala Harris, but as someone who predominantly dates black men, I do beat plenty of folks who think that her representational value is, more significant than I do and who are at least reluctant to be so critical. I also have seen, although I have not swiped right on, a number of non-Black men, usually white guys, who seem to be performatively wearing Kamala Harris t-shirts and their profile pictures in an effort to telegraph either an interest in Black women or uh Uh, To women, broadly speaking, that they are like down and woke and like just friendly with black women in a way that might be appealing to uh, a a white partner. Have you experienced anybody trying to telegraph politics in those kinds of ways on the app? I know that you don't use them, Bertrand, Uh, but uh, I I was just going to say, like in L.A., Uh everyone is very apolitical in the apps. So I don't I don't really see any politics. That's so I don't I don't understand. Yeah, go ahead, Bertrand. I would have a. How to put it? I guess on the apps, it's slightly less political, but I will see people when it comes to 
racial issues, I would say a lot of LA likes to like announce which side they are on for that, which maybe what do you doesn't mean? strike. Um, a lot like of Black, Black Lives, Lives Matter, 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 a lot of like stuff that. So it won't be as like clear cut as like saying liberal or something like that, but there's certain key issues where they want you to know where they stand. Mm -hmm. um, so I see that all the time. Or even if you go from like some of the dating apps, you know, they let you, you can see pe people can put up like an Instagram or something so that you can see like more of like their general life. And especially on Instagram, people seem to like add at least where they stand on, you know, BLM and things like that. So you can get politics out of it, I would say. How does that make you feel? How do you respond to that kind of signaling, Bertrand? You're, so you're a uh, mixed race, uh, black and white, correct? Yeah. How do, how do but, you respond to folks who are not black, who seem to be signaling, um, you know, a sympathy or an you know, identity of interest with um, black people by putting Black Lives Matter in bio? It makes me nervous. Like, I'm not going to enjoy this. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not going to enjoy this conversation. Um, it's definitely. Yeah. When I see that it just makes me nervous because. So there's one, you know, there's one ideal fantasy version where it's like, OK, there's this is a really thoughtful opinion. This is something that they're actually interested in, that they've really developed an opinion on, that they they're going to say a bunch of things that makes the reason why they're doing this really understandable to me. And then there's all these terrible nightmare versions where it's just signaling or it's just um, performative. Actually, worse than just signaling for me is signaling that's followed by like the most cursory opinions on every racial issue mm -hmm. where they're just kind of like towing the line across the board for what they think a liberal in their position is supposed to feel with regard to race. And I'm just going to be sitting there like, wow. I don't, I can't easily agree with any of these opinions. So you um, have been in the situation. You've dated enough to be aware that this is like a thing out in the ether. Uh, yeah, I, it is a thing. Um, I feel like you're really trying to be on someone. I don't have an agenda. I'm just, I'm just trying to get a sense. Because you're, I'm going to tell you, this is a, <laughs> this feels very different. So what's, what's different it like? Women. What's it like? I was I was gonna ask like for the whole panel. For me? Yeah, yeah. Like in what context? Just like what what when you go on like a dating app in DC, is it like like is it all political people and politics? And that just seems overwhelming. Well, no. Like, but... Don't you want like a nice, like political, thoughtful, but a political guy from Los Angeles that doesn't wear his <laughs> politics on his sleeve all the time? Well, my little brother lives in LA. And sometimes the joke is like, I think that my, you know, I need to go move there with him and that my husband definitely is in LA because, but I, I think, look, Could I don't be. need, I don't need politics to be front and center. I would love to not, you know, my preference is to sit around watching trash television and to not be, you know, be able to check out of my life. And I have dabbled in that. I have tried to have dated guys that are in fields that are very different than mine, that aren't lawyers, that aren't in politics, that are, you know, like you know, athletic trainers and, and things like that, like completely divorced from my world. And there was something nice about it, but then sometimes something will happen. Um, like I remember around Force the Vote, I was seeing someone who was not of this world and it was so difficult to try to convey what was going on and why I felt so beleaguered at the time. And I would be like, oh yeah, it, it's hard because today on the internet, you know, these five people with hundreds of thousands of followers decided to, you know, we were friends and there were not. And there's this rift on the left and look at this YouTube page and that YouTube page. And like, it's just like no normal person understands that, which is like attractive. <laughs> but also at the end of the day, I, I couldn't get the level. They were like, oh, OK, I'm sorry you had a bad day, you know. Like, yeah. it, it just so wasn't what you're saying is you want the guy that will be able to understand force the vote. <laughs> and also and also be able to not focus on that all the time well no honestly might live in la mostly it's not to force to vote mostly i just want someone to be nice to have figured out what they want out of life and not be 40 talking about i don't know if i want to be in a relationship like i cannot and you know like decent like my, the bar is on the floor. <laughs> I'm not so gonna lie. Yeah. i was gonna ask about because like a lot of like I said, a lot of the people 
I, I don't know everybody's like background, but a lot of the people I date are either like, sorry, a lot of the people today, I've been dating one person consistently. I can't reaffirm <laughs> that enough. Um, Bert's just keeping his nose clean. He's like, she's yeah. not going to get me. <laughs> LA is a crazy place. You got to confirm things all the time. A lot of the folks are from like poor or uh, lower working class background where like they, it's kind of like, there's, I don't want to say they have no political views, but it's a more apolitical vibe where it's like, it almost feels like I'm able to think about politics so much because it's part of my job. And then for the folks I'm around a lot, it's not part of their job. So it's like they have, it takes up some mental space, especially around like elections or things that pick up enough steam. But they almost have the thing where it's like, they're really focused on say their work and then relaxing from that work and their work mm -hmm. is so removed. Whereas like my work, I'm in education part of the day, writing about, you know, things that intersect with politics. So when we're together, it seems like we just align in such a way that it, it doesn't come up as much. And so I was, I was, you're saying the bar for you is like just down on the floor and you just want nice and decent and whatnot. I was kind of assuming that you were like around a lot of people who maybe also worked in politics or also like devoted a lot of mental space to this. No, I'm not around anyone. It's COVID and I live in a studio apartment in DC. I'm around zero people around this notion version that you're like floating through these bars. First of all, in the best of circumstances, I was never like waltzing in bars, picking up people at counters. Like, what is this, 1953? Is this a world that people are living in that I'm just like not aware of? Where you're, you're like I'm actually good on picking the app. up? I think on the apps, like picture wise, I kind of look, uh, you already said we can curse. I think yeah. I probably look like a fuck boy on an app if you just see like a picture of me. And in person, I seem like a much nicer, likable individual who is not a fuck boy. So like the apps don't serve me. That, that's my opinion on the apps. See, I'm with James. Like I have like big gay man energy because I live on the apps. The apps, I wouldn't, I would never meet anybody if it weren't for an app. Like I don't, I can't remember the last time I met someone and dated them whom I met in real life. The first two dates I went on was just like at a bar. One was I had been there a few times and I knew a waitress kind of liked me. So I just asked her number. The other time was just, I saw someone across the bar and went and asked them for their number. Aww. I don't know. That was just simpler for me. But you, I'm sorry. You also managed to do a pickup at a strip club. Yeah. I feel like women in a strip club are going to be on high alert and like kind of very kind of hostile to men in a super sexually charged environment and a presumption that everyone just, you know, is, is trying to get theirs. You know, like that that speaks to me, Bertrand, of a little bit of game. I doubt that. No, I'm just lucky, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Better, yeah, I'll say, uh, no, it's pretty uncommon. It's also like just common. Not every guy listens to this, but it's common guy advice that like strippers don't like you. They don't really like you. Anyone who thinks a stripper actually likes you is dumb. <laughs> right, but you executed. Like, you managed to lock it down. You, th This one stripper likes you. Because <laughs> he's Bertrand, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, funny enough, not to go, like, into weird background stories, but, like, the I got snuck into a strip club when I was, like, 16 by uh -huh. an older brother of mine towny one james will know that, like there's some small strip clubs not that you went to them maybe you did but there's just some small places around our part of new jersey where they're not going to care if you're like 16 coming in there so actually mm -hmm. the second girl that i'd ever kissed was a stripper i just always had good luck in strip clubs he's, he's got that vibe <laughs> james's face okay james i want to i want to come back to you because you and i are on these apps apparently we're the only ones okay which i mean i feel some kind of way about but fine you and i are on these apps and you're telling me that, oh, I'm curious, in the kind of more casual context in which you're using these apps, because you have a partner, I presume you're not looking for another kind of substantive relationship on the app, or maybe that's not a right pre a presumption. I mean, if it happens, it happens, but whatever. Okay. So I, you know, does that mean that politics are basically, you know, it just doesn't come up? Like, if you're swiping and you see a hot guy, like, and he says, I'm a conservative, it's like, irrelevant? Uh, they never talk about if they're conservative. Or it doesn't not. say there's no like grinder option to tick politics. Oh no, grinder! <laughs> that's 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 full. No, excuse me. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. 
Uh, those of us who are respectable gays will use things like grounder and scruff. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so does scruff not allow you to have um, these options? <laughs> the, the respectable gay. <laughs> Wait, I got to check. Hold up. I got to check to see if they actually let me use the options because it never really comes up. It, it, it honestly really doesn't. It's crazy because a lot of times we'll, you know. Okay. All right. I'm not trying to ruin Bad Faith Podcast. You know, <laughs> Do it. <laughs> but, but okay, a lot of physical things come up first mm. before that ever happens. Mm. You, okay. We, can, we okay. can go there, yeah. Okay. okay, here's the real deal for anybody that's watching. And yes, I'm doing the JB lean that I always do. Let's, let's get real. <laughs> come closer to the screen, people. All right, so in the queer community, especially among gay men, it is easy to find sex, but it is difficult to find love. Mm. The thing is, is that it is, it is flipped a lot of the times. And what happens is we're trying, some of us are trying to find that deep connection. And a lot of times we're pushed on us this carnal desire. So the 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 whole realm of politics is always an afterthought not a forethought mm. so for me you know it's like if we're just trying to have fun the hell with politics it's not going to come up anyway whatever but if i'm trying to find a deep connection then that needs to come up because if not, then I don't want it to come up after. And then there has to be some non-amicable, something that breaks us apart because there is a conflict in values. You know what I mean? Right. But that's so, possible. You can imagine a world where you do have to break up with someone that you kind of like because of a conflict in values. The values mean enough to you for you yeah. to that, for that to happen. Yeah. Are, you, are yeah. people willing to argue with you? So like... And maybe this is like women falling into like being, you know, paying more deference than they should. But when I meet women, they hear like what I do and that I'm, I'm spending this much time writing about these things. A lot of times, like they don't, they don't want to get an argument with me. No, it's the opposite. It. In fact, yeah. let's play a clip, Ben. Let's play that clip from the girls episode where Ole is talking about how men like to argue with their area of expertise. Men love to put like, they be like, I want to, I want a smart woman. By smart, they mean you can speak. By yes. Women, they have the ability to talk. But they would prefer you not, because that's what makes you a good woman. No, baby, by smart, they mean you agree with everything they say. Yes. And you think they're they really mean. insightful. You're really moved okay. by what they have to contribute. I definitely do feel like it's like it's like a it's like a trophy situation where they like yes. the idea of being a guy who could handle a smart woman, mm -hmm. but they don't like the idea of actually losing a fight to you. But they right. make the fights because they're so insecure about the fact that they're maybe looming in the background, the idea that you're smart yes. or smarter yes. than them. So they just, they look for nonsensical things to argue with you about. And in yes. my experience, they do it in your area of expertise. Yes! Yes. Yeah. What in earth is happening here? Yes. Oh my God. You are speaking to me so directly. It's insane. It's like I prof I argue professionally for a living, both as an attorney and now in this capacity. And you're going to mm -hmm. ask me something about politics and then get upset with me when I disagree with you. And I'm like, agree to disagree. We don't have to talk about it. Agree to disagree. But then that's interpreted as me like disrespecting their intellect. Does that resonate with you? Because to me, that was very true to my experience. Resonates yeah. with me. <laughs> it resonates with you, Jackson, because because you're trying to argue with these women down, or because they're trying to argue with you. No, no, because I took this one I took this one girl out on a date, happened mm -hmm. to be a stripper too, mm -hmm. and um, we went Remember out that. for brunch, and because they can't go out for dinner because she's a stripper, so we went out for brunch, and it was the most boring date I've ever been on in my life. Like she, like the individual in that video just said, like she just didn't talk. Mm. So I was like, I need someone who at least talks. And that's that's like my standard is like it, I need you to at least talk. So then I left the date halfway through. I just she's like, are you not having fun? And I'm like, to be honest, no, I'm not like you're very boring. And I left block and she called me back later and she wanted to like hang out later. But I was like, how, how do you expect to get through life if you don't even talk? You know, it's so weird. I don't. I don't, I don't, I like, I don't understand what's happening. Yeah. Okay. 
that's why I wanted to ask because like I get I'm not even someone who really likes telling everyone that I meet about like I don't want to get into that conversation all the time but it obviously comes up in dating and it certainly comes up when you're with someone mm -hmm. but yeah it almost feels like people hear much time I spend on my opinion so they just want to defer to me and that might just be like women playing nice or maybe they've no learned. one defers to me no one defers to no men defer to me really no one defers to me about a single thing that's impossible for me to imagine that that's sad because the thing is is that uh you know what and i said this to a friend um and i'm gonna say it here it's whatever um i feel like women should stop apologizing for existing right that's all well and good but that also is a recipe for singledom like what well, like, like, no, then we need to, then we, hold up. Then we need to talk to our brothers and be like, look, you guys need to stop demanding women to apologize for their existence because guess what? Without them, you wouldn't exist. And so, yes. therefore, that's what you men need are to start <laughs> listening to them because they, they have a lot of knowledge too. Because, <laughs> because they don't care. Nobody cares. Like, well, I, well, 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 maybe we Bria, guys care, should Bria, make I them care. I care so deeply about that. You don't even know. Jackson, I believe you me. don't look. I mean, you're you're so young that I no can't no think. you I care so deeply about these things no. really I, okay. I do here here's what I, here this, this is my experience maybe I've overstated it it's not that every single it's not that nobody will defer to me about anything but there are extremes of people who say this men write in their profile things like oh I love a woman who can debate like I love a woman with opinions have something to say that's a red flag. Because what that really means is I'm about to argue with you and not listen to a thing you say. I want a woman who is high value enough or, or, or like capable enough that when I beat her down, I feel like I've actually accomplished something. I want a worthy um, prey for the hunt is what they're saying. They're not saying they actually want to be hunted back. They're saying that they want to know when they bring the lion carcass home and put it on the wall, that it's going to be something they can be proud of. You know, so there's that extreme. And the other extreme is guys who are so disinterested in what you are about or what you're doing for work and what you're saying. You're sitting there listening to them talk on and on and on about what they've done in their perfectly legitimate but often not especially exciting day job without a single question, follow up about, oh, Brianna, you were late today. Why was it? Oh, maybe it was because, you know, I had to prepare for an interview with Megan Kelly, but you're not going to ask and you're never going to find out. And apparently you don't care that something kind of interesting and exciting happened in my life today. <laughs> like th those are my, that's my life. Those are my extremes. And frankly, the disinterested person who doesn't fight with me is preferable, especially, you know, if they're cute. <laughs> but you shouldn't have to settle for that, I guess is what we're trying to say. Jackson. Yeah. Should have conditional tense doesn't help me at all. <laughs> like should have, could have. <laughs> I just would have figured at like my big age. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> nah, it was like <laughs> it's what you do. Like you, you get your whole livelihood is connected to this. So I would assume that there would be a, a list of talking points where if Free's talking about these, probably some deference. Pro uh, benefit of the doubt, something. I'm not saying nobody can argue with you, but I don't know. I just Look, I, I, I don't want to overstate it. Like, yeah. there are the people that I go on dates with, and then there are people I end up dating who obviously are not insufferable, right? But it's combing through a lot of these kinds of experiences to find the occasional person with whom there's like an appropriate amount of back and forth. And those people I've dated for periods of time, and that's been very nice. And then it has ended <laughs> from one reason or another. So I guess I want to I want to follow up on this point, though. Um, Bertrand, you mentioned that you tend to date people who are working class or poor, share a kind of similar economic background that, yeah. as, as you do. And for people who, who haven't, you should go back and listen to Bertrand's last appearance on the show where he uh, talked about an article he wrote about how low income people are really represented in Hollywood and on writing staffs and how his own experience, you know, differs from some of the folks that are hired for those positions. And that has a consequence for both representation and like what we see on the screen. Um, but a question that came up on the, on the lady panel was basically, would you date a broke guy? And the ladies weren't really about it. <laughs> 
And there was some negative feedback about that and whether that is in conflict with one's leftist values. And I want to know what you gentlemen have to say about that and whether you have ever felt less inclined to date someone because of their economic status. Um, I am broke. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's be real. All right. James is broke. <laughs> And my boyfriend got with me when I was broke. Okay, is your boyfriend broke? I'm not going to speak for him. <laughs> Look, I'm not going to fault somebody for being a victim of this capitalist system. And if their heart and values align with mine, bring it all over, baby. We'll start something. And if you need, and if you need me to help take care of you, then you know, we'll help take care of each other. But that's that's ultimately what I think. James, do you think that puts more pressure on the relationship? I mean, you look at the statistics, divorce statistics and stuff, and it's much difficult, more difficult for lower income people to stay together, not because of like magical reasons, but because, you know, the number one thing that people fight over is finances and it can put strain on the relationship. You know, does that ever cross your mind? Like, are there kind of like non judgmental reasons to say, you know, ideally, you know, you fall in love, you fall in love. But ideally, I prefer to be with someone with, for, with whom the relationship didn't have those extra challenges. I mean, you prefer it, but the thing is, is that you you do the best you can within that relationship and if that person is doing the best they can, then that's just how it is. But the thing is, is that I go to the point of why is this person in that position in the first place? And a, a lot of times it's because they don't make a living wage. Uh, they don't have the, type, the, you know, the correct health care. Somebody like me, I'm disabled. You know, why isn't that, you know, people who are disabled get a living income? You know what I mean? So the thing is, is that ultimately when you start to look, because nobody seeks to be poor and nobody seeks to be lazy. I think that's a capitalistic type of mindset. Um, and so it's like, why are people in this position in the first place? And then once you start to understand that, it's like that person, you know, isn't poor because there's some flaw within them it's just the system is flawed so i don't even though we're going through we may end up going through tough times because of financial situations we do the best we can we get the jobs that we can we if we need if we want to go back to school we can you know but there, there's only so much you can help with that you know what i mean because the right. system is broken or the system is not broken it's designed this way but it's designed to to oppress those of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, l well, let me ask you this, Jackson. Has it ever come up for you that you've dated a woman who had, you know, so little resources that it negatively impacted, impacted the relationship? Uh, no, but I think that's mainly because I've only been in, I've been in, uh, three serious relationships and they were all you. either during COVID or during high school. Wait, so you've been in three serious relationships more than one serious relationship during COVID? No, no, no. So there've been COVID or when I was in high school. So like one during COVID okay. and then all the other, the others were like high school or just graduated high school. And but I, I, go ahead. Every, everyone's kind of poor during the start of COVID and during, uh, so you're so during young, high school. like who has resources when they're 20? Exactly. But looking, looking at it now, like what, how would I, treat the dating field. I don't think I would care. Like, I, I don't think I would care at all, but um, maybe, I don't know, but I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think I would care. Like if you have money or not, I would want someone to be driven. Like I dated a girl who is, uh, who is very lazy and that got on my nerves. What do you mean by uh, lazy? Yeah. She was lazy as hell. But what, is, uh, what does that mean? What? Cause James says there's no such thing as lazy. And I'm inclined to agree. There's like, you know, there's depressed, there's anxious, there's ADHD. There's a lot of things that can get between you and doing what you maybe should be doing. She just wanted to surf all day, every day. <laughs> right. I don't know. I feel like I love surfing too, but like to just hang out at the beach all day, every day, it's like, I can't really do that. You know? So, uh, that, that was one thing, but like, I don't think I'd care about money. No. I, um, so what you mentioned, Bree, just about how difficult it is in relationships, um, financial strain. So me and my ex 
high school who I was with for 15 years, we were both coming out of poverty. And it was um, that whole attempting to go to school and move up and the part of New Jersey we were working in, especially like after the 2008 recession, uh, it was difficult. Um, it was very hard to find, you know, this part time like college kid type job that would even respect the fact that you had to go to school on certain days. Mm -hmm. um, getting fired, getting let go, getting your hours reduced just because you weren't at some, you know, meager wage jobs back in call. And it took forever. And there was so much, so many calculations like, uh, we're going to take on more debt because we're going to ask more for our like Stafford loan for school so that we can use like the extra refund check to pay back some of these bills from like the last time one of us was unemployed. And it's just, yeah, it's brutal. And yet when I, you know, start dating again it just I, I didn't think about it i didn't think about like the money difference between um because now you know i'm well off and i have like a really secure job and i didn't think about it i was mostly just interested in the people it wasn't until like very i think employment was kind of my bar it was just mm -hmm. like you should be employed mm -hmm. i would like if you're employed uh and that's as far as it went but recently I do get more nervous now about things like, I don't know, paying for retirement, having those things. So I, I would say it's just slowly crept up on me that, you know, uh, if you're dating someone where like 401k or any of that sort of extra money just isn't feasible, uh, you know, that's something that I think about now, even though I don't, I get weird about like, conversations towards like ambition and always having to have ambition because i don't know if like i think you should have things that you love in life but i'm suspicious of the idea that your work should be the the place where all of your ambition goes and so i kind of want to be open yeah. to the people who maybe they're working at a restaurant or whatever and that work is fine to them because it fits into like the other parts of their life they like and like i don't want to be like ah you got to go to school and get this other thing at the same time. Yeah. As I get older, I do worry more about the whole pension retirement right. thing for illness thing. Life or if they have student loans, but like, yeah. I, I hear you on ambition, but sometimes I think what it really is, what people, people are saying ambition, but what they mean is they'd like someone, sometimes it's a combination of someone who's depressed because of their life circumstances and also not critically trying to resolve the things that are making them unhappy. And so that's a kind of circular land of I'm just upset and there's no way out. And ambition would be the way out and ambition to do whatever, change jobs, move cities, whatever it is, is going to make you happy. And when you're with someone who is really in that, in that rut and, you know, the ambition is what people are saying, I want them to be ambitious, but they really want to say, is I want them to be happy and do whatever it is that's going to get them out of the situation that's going to make them unhappy. And the other thing is I think that sometimes I, I have begun checking more for ambition. Again, it's not the right word, but to have some sense of where you want to be, whether it's your professional life or your personal life in the future, even if it's small goals. Like for me recently, it's like, this is the year I move into a one bedroom apartment. <laughs> I'm getting out of the studios this year. Right. Like, you know, I, you know, I, you know, if, do I want to leave? DC, do I want to leave the country? Do I want to go live in Paris for a year? Like I, 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 I'm constantly thinking about the different, you know, how I would like my life to look two, yeah. three, four, five, six, ten 10 years from now. I frequently find when I put that question to men, they're like, Oh no, <laughs> yeah, I like my job. I'm like, okay, great. Where do you see yourself like personally in five years? Oh, you know, around here. <laughs> Well, it's okay. Um, we're a little on this date. <laughs> you know, like you are an adult. You're not 22. You're 42. What's a, what's a good answer to that question? You know, if you don't want to be married, that's completely fine. But don't okay. hide the ball. You can just say, I, you know, I I plan to be single and exactly where I am five years from now. But oftentimes it doesn't seem to be a, a decision. These aren't like George Clooney's here. It's it's people who are who are like, oh, I literally haven't thought about it. And the worst is people who are like in their mid 30s who are like very much, I want to have kids. And then are like dating women in their mid 30s or, or older. 
and like are also not thinking about it. And I'm like, it's fine if you don't want to have kids tomorrow, but you should be dating a woman who's like 27 and leaving this poor old broads alone. Like, let them free. <laughs> they want to do that. They should just go out to a bar because I tell you, I prefer people to be close to my age. I couldn't find like just randomly shooting. It's like anyone over the age of 29 is not going outside. They are strictly dating. Apps. Correct. I couldn't find any 30 year old <laughs> who like. I think I'm the only one I know who met somebody, you know, out in the wild. So if these Correct. if these guys are all looking for someone who's like 26 and can have their kids just go outside. That's well, that's the thing. They there. say they're not looking for it. They say, "Oh, I want to I want to reminisce about Triber Keepers and snorkels or whatever the hell we were into in like 1991." <laughs> but like <laughs> But then it's like that's what, like I'm not I'm not child motivated. So this isn't about me, but like I'm like you guys, it's, it's, I'm, I, I feel like the disrespect for my women in arms who are child motivated because it's, they're literally not even thinking about it. I got told by uh, a relative of mine, she leans more conservative as does her boyfriend. And, um, they gave me the advice that I don't even have to worry about it. Like after I got out of the marriage, um, and I was just like, now I don't, I don't know what this means for the whole kids conversation. Their first advice to me right away was like, well, you're a guy. You can just have kids whenever, just date somebody who's young. And this is somebody, it was weird for me because they were both like in like mid twenties. And, you know, I have this whole view that you supposedly people are getting more progressive on certain of these things, but their advice sounded like it had been from like 30 years ago. Like, yeah, it's I can just have a kid, whatever. It's, but it's just the reality. It's just, it's not like. I would argue that that's not really a political statement. It's just. I don't know how great I'd feel being like, just if I knew that I wanted to have kids and I'm like, I don't know, 41. I'm just like, well, I've decided this is the year. Let me go find someone who's like, can still do this at like 20. I wouldn't feel great about that. Why not? What's the difference between saying that and saying, well, saying my priority is to have biological children, let's say. And what's the difference between saying that and therefore that's going to affect the age of the people that I'm courting? Maybe it is not a 25 year old. Maybe it's a. 35 year old, you know, um, and saying, you know, I want someone who has halfway decent politics. I want someone who doesn't go you yuck at homeless people. <laughs> you know, these are all choices. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have interrogated the feeling enough. I just know That's how there men was something are. Ab- they don't be interrogating anything. There's something <laughs> about it that just seems almost like I'm, uh, I'm skeptical of that sort of convenience. Like, Somebody telling me, oh, you're a man. You don't have to worry about it. If, you know, you get to like 42 and you decide you want to have kids, just go scoop yourself up like a 32-year-old. Like the idea that it should be that easy for me makes me suspicious that maybe it isn't a good thing. Again, with the shouldas, you and the conditional tenses, shoulda, woulda, coulda, the world, I wish it were a better place. But like, here we are. I'm not going to contribute. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens if you're knocking knocking 42's door <laughs> and feeling the biological urge all of a sudden. You guys have been very patient with me. I've been very probing. You've given me some things, perhaps not as much as I would have liked. I think the next stage is a co-ed panel. Oof. Excuse me. Who said oof? <laughs> me. <laughs> Jackson, Jackson, why does that make you say oof? What are you afraid of? That sounds uh, that sounds worse than like uh, what I'm doing tomorrow, debating Sam Cedar, like <laughs> talking about my feelings and um, dating and emotions on a co-ed panel. It's not dating and emotions. Look, I, I think it's like weirdly. I don't know. It's telling. I don't mean to say make a judgment or blame, but it seems to me very telling that the women on the all women's panel. Very much wanted to be in relationships. There was an age spread there. The the 22-year-old wanted to be in a relationship. The 27-ish year old wanted to be in a relationship. The 32-ish, three, I'm not sure exactly sure how old she is, wanted to be in a relationship. Who is the 22-year-old? Uh, she I worked with her on the campaign. Her name's uh, Delaney. Uh, she, she was our HBCU um, outreach chair. She's delightful and wonderful and a recent college grad. Okay. She might be a little older than 22 now. It, but they all had very similar stories across the board in terms of like a lack of interest and commitment from men, a kind of lack of fundamental respect for their intellect, a prioritization of looks and not necessarily their looks, even though I would argue that they're all well above average in attractiveness. Um, you know, there was a racial dynamic to the conversation. 
Um, Kate, Kate Willett had a slum a different perspective as someone who's bi and who also dates women, but expressed a lot of frustration about like fuck boys to use Bertrand's parlance <laughs> and people who were just not serious. Like they weren't serious. And, and that asymmetry, like, I don't know what to do. I, I feel like that still remains kind of unplumbed, un, unexamined here. You guys are all like stonewalling me. <laughs> I feel like we're supposed to date. <laughs> no, see, here's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of us men that actually want the same things. I think part of it is, is sometimes you throw a rock and you hit a guy that wants those things, but it's like you throw another rock and then there's a sea of guys that aren't about it. I, it's just, it's, it's tough because. The thing is, is that, you know, I as a gay man, I kind of go through the same things, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. So it's, the thing is, is that men aren't trash. It's just you have to go through some of the dirt to find gold. Bertrand's Twitter handle is literally like black as trash. <laughs> Representing. I feel like some of the comments, some of the points Bree brought up, I... I don't think I was led led in that direction. I'm I'm down to plumb those things, but I uh You're down I'm to trying. plumb. Okay, then like let's plumb. What what do you think that I haven't put to you pointedly enough in the course of this conversation? Some of those not standard in a bad way, but just like those other relationship talking points, like the worry about like planning for the future, things like that. I felt like we can't we start with more what's it like dating someone who the political affiliation was like the focus. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I uh, I definitely fall in that camp where I probably wasn't thinking about the future too hard. But I, you got uh, married. <clears throat> That's a significant commitment. Ah, so fun story about that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so we got together, and I really do fall into like the stereotype that you said. Like I, I didn't have like any specific plan for what i was going to do i knew that i was good at school but i didn't really care that much whereas she was like she was very motivated to get out very motivated to go to college and to do all those things and i mostly just didn't want to be dead weight so i like walked into a community college the closest table to the door you know they do that little u-shape each of the conference tables offering like some different major and you know the first one to the door was like education I walked over to that guy. He told me about like some dual bachelor's master's program. And I was like, teacher, that sounds like a regular job. I could become that and not be dead weight. So I kind of was just trying to match. And that's where I was getting a lot of my direction from. And even with the marriage thing, although I was down to stay with her for forever, our marriage came about because of the class issues, because um, the rules around financial aid are pretty ridiculous and until you're over the age of 24 you're just considered your parents dependent which puts a real strain on getting financial aid if you don't have a good relationship with your parent and it's borderline impossible to get out of that arrangement so we'd already been together for five years i come home from work and she's just like what if we got married because that would make us independent i was like yeah i'm down and yeah just kind of took opportunities as they arose. All right. So what I'm hearing, Bertrand, is that love is a lie. It's <laughs> a real inspirational tale. <laughs> James, tell me something. Tell me something to make me happy. Tell me, tell me that you have like amazing Valentine's Day plans coming up. Tell me, tell me about tell me something that makes me optimistic about the the state of love on the left right now. So as far as, you know, uh, what I am I would like to plan, because mm -hmm. like I said, and I'm going to reiterate, James is broke, but I would like to do what I did last time, which is uh, my boyfriend, one of his favorite uh, artists is Vincent Van Gogh. And mm -hmm. so I got him a Van Gogh painting hmm. and I got him. That sounds expensive. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. That sounds like it's going to no, be at least a few trust million. Trust me. <laughs> like I said, Bree, 
I'm broke. So I know how to get things for cheap. But <laughs> so not that the gift was cheap. It's just I know how to get things that are very affordable for me. Mm -hmm. um, but also, and this was pre-COVID and when I still had a job. So don't come after me, people. But <laughs> what, what I also did was I also sent him chocolate covered strawberries, Aww. you know, and I sent him some and I sent him his favorite flower. Uh, because nice. you know roses are so roses are so overdone Cliche. sure yeah you know and, and it's like yeah yeah baby's breath roses yeah whatever it's like what is your favorite flower do you like sunflowers do you like tulips do you like you know padonias i don't even know if i said that right but whatever but <laughs> what, what do you thing. like yeah yeah so it's like what do you like and and you know he's also a gamer so a video game so the thing is yeah. that sounds very thoughtful but but the thing is is that i would like to do that again i don't know if i will be but the thought is the thought is there the thought is there it's recorded on the podcast it registers it's locked in but the thing is is when it comes to finding love on the left and this is going to sound kind of cliche i apologize for this but most people who i meet typically on the left typically have a love and compassion for humanity. So that love is there, right? But at the same time, when it comes to finding a romantic love, uh, it's just people are people, and it's going to be difficult no matter what. Um, so the, the left is full of a bunch of Ralph Naders, you know, Full of compassion and helpfulness to everybody, kind of weirdly asexual and seemingly, you know, never settled down. He's oh, like, wait, 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 wait. As far as I know, he's just a private man, but he's a, like, he's hold, just a hunk. Like, no, no, hold up. There is n very little asexuals in, on the left. I only know of one. So <laughs> trust me. Uh, yeah, no, Brie. But the thing is, is that, you know, uh, we, some of us uh, approach love and kind of a, uh, I guess a more delicate way because we're trying to find somebody that has those values first, you know, because I, I don't want to get with somebody that, you know, that thinks that, you know, being poor, excuse me, or being homeless is your own damn fault. And it's a sin, you know, so we kind of, we kind of tread that kind of lightly. Too... In real life, I find it's a much more nuanced difference that ends up coming up than like, yuck poor people <laughs> like most people yeah, of course. you know aren't walking around most conservatives aren't saying yuck poor people you know like no like we like what's truly... an, what's an example of a more nuanced thing that you might find i'll just throw out there that there. i do get yuck poor people <laughs> i've gotten that too los yeah. angeles is interesting yikes yeah yeah i get bulldozer comments about like they should just bulldoze those encampments so oh my god yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I should count my blessings in some respects, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Maybe. I don't know. Like, so I, I date le like the, my boyfriends have all been very progressive for the last ever since I've been progressive. Let's say, you know, they've worked in helping professions, public defenders, housing attorneys, things like that. So like that has never been an issue. And again, the issue is not like the people who have become my boyfriends because they were good. That's why I kept them. It's the, it's, you know, the people that I just go on dates with. Okay, so here's an example. I got in a big fight with someone I was seeing over the summer um, over Anthony Fauci. And there was like a yard sign. I'm sorry if I've told this on the podcast before, but there was a yard sign, like a Fauci yard sign in like a Tony neighborhood we were driving through in D.C. And I like rolled my eyes and like scoffed. I was like, oh, <laughs> And this is before a lot of the criticism of the Fauci had come out. Like now there's plenty of anti-Fauci people, but, you know, and he was like, what? And I was like, you know, Fauci and all this <laughs> mask misinformation, you know? And he was like, what are you talking about? Like, he's like, you know, he's actually done like a lot of really important work, you know? And like, what am I going to do? Am I going to ruin the day by having a fight about Anthony Fauci as we're like having a nice summer drive? I don't know. Like that's a decision that I'm confronted with. Or on, an, on one other time, um, we were at a, a fairground and there were a bunch of like electric, there were a bunch of school buses that had like, I don't know, driven kids there or whatever. And they were all electric. And I said something like, 
I was being kind of a B-I-T-C, which I'm not going to lie. But I said something kind of provocative, like, I know that he liked Biden and, and worked. I don't want to give too much away, but like <laughs> the environment was a priority for him. <clears throat> uh-huh. And so I said something cheeky like, uh, oh, look at all these electric school buses. What a good thing that Biden is uh, electrifying a whole 3% of the school bus force. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you keep mad at me because I know this is something you want to. You care a lot about the environment. Like, what are you going to do? Defend Biden on this point? But like, also, I didn't have to say anything. I will own that. Like, I didn't have to say anything. And I'm I very, glad you said something. <laughs> like, I regretted it instantly because it like ruined the next hour. Like, it truly well, ruined. Well. <laughs> Probably why you shouldn't uh, get with liberals. Well, yeah, but like, who are you going to date? Like a like a barely left kind of a, he was like an Elizabeth Warren kind of liberal, you know? That's a liberal, yeah. Yeah, but in the in the in the grand scheme of the world, what am I supposed to do? Like the 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 concentric circles of what I'm looking for are so impossibly narrow. Men, okay, that's fifty percent off. Okay, like leftists, lop off ninety five percent of that. Like you know, I I tend to like to date people from marginalized communities. Okay. Now we're down to like 10% of that, you know, yeah. at least five, it sounds six. like a lot Here of, we are. It, it <laughs> sounds like preferences, but like, maybe you could make exceptions. I don't know. Which one of those should I, um, well, you just said, on? I like to date people from marginalized communities. That doesn't necessarily. Okay. Home slice, home slice with the school buses was a Caucasian man. So okay. that's what happened. I took a chance. It didn't work out. Do you have do you have uh, do you have Valentine's plans? I I do not Jackson Hinkle. I do you not have come Valentine's out to L.A. Plans. with me. We'll have, come out to L.A. We'll have a great. I know I'm not from a marginalized community, but <laughs> we can have a great. I know and I'm only 22. Jackson but we can Hinkle have a great is going to shoot his shot. Jackson, you are 22 years old. You were born in like 1997 or something. <laughs> <laughs> when, 19, when were you born? 1999. But I'm mentally like I'm mentally more mature, maybe than 22. I was in high school, Jackson, in 1999. I was singing about the millennium. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was in high school too. <laughs> it's okay, Jack. I, I like. I appreciate Jackson's a ballsy fellow, and I have no concern that life is going to turn out just fine for Jackson Hinkle. I, I respect the game, Jackson. All right. I will come out to LA, and if you happen to know anybody who won't get me put on like a, ch- a child predator list. <laughs> <laughs> What is, what is the rule like half your age plus seven? That well, doesn't apply when we're talking about like the 40 year old and the kid situation. You, okay? <laughs> we'll people okay. look for you while we're out for coffee. <laughs> Wait, maybe, maybe, maybe that's where shoot. We'll we settle for that. It. We'll settle for that. I'll, I'll Actually, there's that. really good. There's a really good like Bernie Sanders coffee shop. I'll take you there. Okay. It'll be fun. It, it's Watch a out deal. for paparazzi. Oh, well, well, there's, there is a, um, a spot here that actually a very lovely date took me to. I should not. Oh, I meant to ask you about ghosting discourse. Sorry, I was about to think, say I shouldn't have ghosted this guy because he was very nice, but I just you know wasn't interested. But there's a spot here that apparently all the leftists go in um, D.C. and it's called like Ben. What's it called? Lyman. Yeah. Sorry, Lyman. sort of Lyman. Yeah, yeah. Lyman. Yeah. yeah, but like there are spots, there are hangs. I guess maybe I should just post up at the bar there and see what happens. But it's not exactly my vibe. Here's what's, true. Here's what's honest. I will say about myself. My politics don't necessarily align with the aesthetic that I tend to go for. What do you mean by so aesthetics? What does that mean? I, I tend to like a sort of clean cut preppy guy, like aesthetically, you know, not like very tattooed. This like, sounds good for don't, Jackson. Don't get mad at me. Like don't like tattooed people. Like don't get mad at me. I've dated people with tattoos, but like I, I tend to go for a J. Crew kind of look. <laughs> you, what you're saying, Bree, is you're looking for the Dan Humphrey to your Serena Vanderwoodson. Oh Lord, have mercy! Please don't don't do this to me, Jackson. <laughs> that, I don't. I'm just I'm just asking a question. I mean, I'm I'm looking for my Dwayne to my Whitley. I don't know. I'm trying to think. I, I mean, yes, on some level. But I got you know, that so reference, we, by the way. Which one? The, the Whitley the one? The Dwayne to Whitley? Yeah, yeah because Jack, Jack, Jackson's just doing this from his own generational perspective, which is fine. I watched... Gossip I, Girl? Gossip Girl's not my... That's I'm I'm like generation after Gossip Girl. Okay, there's but there's a, a new, new Gossip, Gossip Girl, girl out right now, correct. I know. I Jackson know. is too and young Dan for Humphrey Gossip Red Girl. Chomsky. Jackson is too young for the new Gossip Girl, which I was watching in law school. <laughs> the new Gossip... I haven't... No, the I, old I, I, refused... I mean, the, the original Gossip Girl, yeah. 
I just watched it for the second time. I refuse to watch the new Gossip Girl. Not going to watch it. It's. I mean, we could do an episode on that. It's. I. It has its. It has its pros and cons. It. It is clean cut is. guy and trash TV. That's like. <laughs> that's your thing. And I know that a lot of. I mean, like the the clientele in that particular bar tend to be a little bit more like, you know, grunge punk, which is very cool. And there's no judgments. But I just historically have dated people with a certain like a different aesthetic than that. And sometimes I think our vibes are cross. Like I'm going to places and presenting myself in a way that doesn't necessarily attract the kind of person that I've had people say to me, oh, you should date like a musician or an artist. I've never met one. <laughs> like I don't come across them. Also, you know, I've got times, I've, I, don't come I play across guitar. Them. I've got my guitar back. There. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you so, know what? I'm going to have to rap before, <laughs> before Jackson starts like writing me poetry or something. <laughs> Look, this has been a lot of fun. Bertrand, I, I feel like you were you were trying to circle us back and get more into some of the nuances here. And we are going to pick up on those when I bring you back for this co-ed panel. I would love, by the way, to be able to do a co-ed panel in person. But COVID permitting, we'll see what we can do and where we can arrange and geographically meet up. But I really appreciate all of you, you, you three spending this time with me today. Can we go around, go ahead and start with James and tell people where they can find you and maybe like a sentence or two about what you normally do when Brianna Joy Gray isn't pressing you about your personal life. <laughs> you guys can find me on Twitter at JB font. You can also go to my channel on at, you know, the JB font channel that is on YouTube. And also I am on revolutionary blackout network. Uh, we are a black leftist network. And so you can find me on there. Uh, and the thing is, is, you know, what I'm doing is I am basically on Twitter, half of what I'm saying is things against capitalism. And the other half, I'm trying to, you know, inspire people to just make the world a better place. And so that's pretty much where you'll find me doing either that or in my other days, I'm actually on kidney dialysis. So you'll find me there. So, hey, but uh, just come through and say hello. Anyway. Thank you, James. And I hope to have you back soon to talk about substantive things because you're Thank great. You. And I've been following you for a while. All right, Bertrand. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at underscore Black Trash. Um, I've also been featured in Current Affairs, New York Times, and going way back. No one ever referenced it, but People's Policy Project, um, if you just want to look up some of my writing. Um, and any future writing I have coming up, I always put it on Twitter. That's probably the main way to interact with my stuff. I mostly write about um, class, particularly class division within Black America and how that relates to pop culture. And every once in a while, I get to talk just about pop culture, which is dope because I love movies. Uh, but yeah, follow me on Twitter. That's where all my stuff is. Thank you, Bertrand. And Jackson, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter or YouTube. I send out lots of fire tweets. And you can also find me at the popular Los Angeles bars and clubs having a great time. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to hearing that uh, debate with Sam Zeter. Let me know if you want any tips. When people listen to this, it will have already happened. So um, to the people in the future, I hope it went well. <laughs> and thank you all me for too. listening. <laughs> this is the Bad Faith Podcast. You know that you can get an extra episode every uh, week, a premium episode that comes out on Mondays by subscribing at patreon.com slash bad faith podcast. You can get full video of all of those episodes and um, cool backlogged episodes like the one we just released, the female dating panel, which you all have access to now. And it's just a taste of the kind of deliciousness that is existing behind the paywall. So I appreciate you if you want to subscribe. If not, go ahead over to Bad Faith YouTube and you can watch a lot of uh, free video clips from our premium episodes. We appreciate you either way. The like and subscribe goes a long way to help you the algorithm. And as always, keep it faith. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder that this is a podcast. You can catch an extra premium episode every Monday for $5 a month at patreon.com slash Podcast. That's patreon.com slash badfaithpodcast for $5 a month, an extra episode every week. Additionally, please do consider liking this video, subscribing to this channel. It helps us out. It helps independent media beat the algorithm. We appreciate you. And as always, keep the faith.